Hello and welcome to our sermon of this, the first Sunday after Trinity. Steps are now being taken to open our churches again, but they will be small steps and in stages. It will be a long time before we go back to how things used to be. However, in the meantime, we will continue to stream our services and to post sermons and other resources on Facebook, YouTube and on our website. So please do keep checking for updates and keep on engaging with us as best you can. But we do look forward to the day when we can all meet again. Until then, our worship continues here online. And so it was today that earlier in our worship, which was streamed live on Facebook, and you can still see it there, we heard our three readings. Our readings for today, which were the first reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 2, to the first part of verse 8. Our second reading was from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. And our Gospel reading from the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St Matthew, starting at verse 35 and continuing to chapter 10, verse 8. And so let's hear again our Gospel reading for today from St Matthew's Gospel. Okay. Now? Yeah. Right. Hello everybody. So nice to have the opportunity to be with you again. The, gospel, the, um, the reading today is from St. Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest, send out his labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the connector. Hananian and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what does our Gospel reading have to tell us today in our current situation? It's a passage that looks back to Jesus' ministry that Matthew has told us about so far in his Gospel, chapters 4 to 9. It's also looking forward to the ministry and mission of the disciples, which Matthew will talk about in chapter 10. And so perhaps it can give us some ideas on what it means for us to be disciples of Jesus in our own time and place. Hello and welcome on this the first Sunday after Trinity. We're now in ordinary time. Until now we've been keeping festivals, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, 
Easter, Pentecost, and last week Trinity Sunday. And now in ordinary time, we follow uh, through the weeks the story of Jesus in this year following the story through the Gospel of Matthew, seeing what Jesus did and said and how we can relate to that, what it has to say to us. At the same time, we're beginning to wonder what it is to be church and to do church as restrictions begin to lift. The PCC are currently debating uh, how we can open up the church for private prayer. And in the weeks that follow, various other restrictions will be lifted. And so do keep an eye on our Facebook page and website to see what it is we're allowed to do and how we think we're going to do it. And as we think about these issues as a church, we also have to think, what is it to be church? How can we do church and be church in this changed world? And perhaps there's no better starting place than the story of Jesus himself. Look at what he said and did. Well, we heard a few moments ago from Dorothy our Gospel reading. And let's have another look at that, or a part of that, to see what it is that Jesus might be telling us today as we begin this task of looking at what it is to be a follower of Jesus in a post-Covid-19 world. We were told right at the start that uh, Jesus went about all the cities and villages. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus calls his disciples to follow him. He doesn't ask them to accept a code of ethics or a creed. He calls his disciples to follow him. Jesus is the good news. The good news is not about an institution, an organisation, a hierarchy. Instead, it's simply about Jesus from Nazareth the Word made flesh, the Son of God. And when we think about the good news or the Gospel, what is it that springs to mind? Is it religion, tradition, a building, a liturgy, or is it Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, the Son of God? As we begin to think about being church, and doing church, we have to remember that our buildings, our liturgies, our institutions, lovely though they are and much as we love them and we will do our best uh, to keep them, but at the end of the day they are not important. At the end of the day it's Jesus Christ and him alone. Our hymn at the end of our service uh, this morning was all for Jesus. All for Jesus, this our song will ever be. And what else does our reading from today tell us? It tells us that Jesus went about. He went about into the cities and the towns and the villages, teaching in their synagogues. He went about. In Jesus' day, faith was about coming to God, coming to Jerusalem, coming to the temple. God was a God that we must approach. We must make the journey and the effort to approach him. Whereas Jesus comes to us, he went about. This man, the son of the living God, wanders the roads of the countryside. He sleeps in the homes of ordinary people, eats with people no matter who they are, however respectable or not they may be. Jesus goes wherever he is welcomed. Respectability and correct etiquette are not important for Jesus Christ. And the question for us in our faith is are we prepared to put ourselves out for our faith? Is our faith to be something that's convenient for us? What does it mean to follow Jesus, the man, the Son of God, that we say we believe in. 
And then we're told Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues. He's taking the message to where the people are, even if that means going to a place that's hostile or dangerous. Don't forget, it was the religious hierarchy who opposed him, and yet he goes into the midst of where they are, into the synagogues and into the temple itself. He doesn't go to a place where he can feel safe, and hope that people will come out to him. Instead, he goes right into the heart of the community, into the place where they are gathered. They perhaps wouldn't have minded so much if he went out into the desert, just as John the Baptist did, with a little group of followers, and let people come to him, and he can harangue them all he likes. But Jesus goes into the midst of their territory, threatening everything for which they stood. And the question for us is, where do we live our faith? Do we live it privately? Do we live it where we feel safe? Do we lock ourselves in our homes or in our church? Or dare we go out and live lives like Jesus, where it challenges the powerful and the influential? Where we live our faith is a test of what we believe. And we must go to where the people are, whether they come to our church building, whether it's online and are welcomed into their homes, or whether it's out in the community, albeit in a safe way that's safe for them, even if it puts us out in the efforts that we must take to reach them. And why is it that Jesus did all this? We're told that he went to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. There was a purpose in what Jesus did. He went out to bring freedom. Freedom from a religion of fear with rules and regulations, of a vengeful God who demands sacrifice. He comes to bring freedom from the despair that life brought to the poor and the vulnerable. He comes to bring freedom from the isolation and judgment brought by sickness. Why do we believe? Is it because of what Jesus has done? Is it because we have heard his message of life found through grace? Or do we believe because we're attached to a faith of rules and regulations? What is it that's going to be important as we look at what church is and how we can be church and do church? Is it about the regulations that we have? Or is it about the freedom that we seek to bring to lives, our own, and to those of others? And we were told right at the start that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. In the Greek we're told that in fact his bowels were moved for them. This is a God who feels emotion in the innermost part of his being. A faith which is based on love not on regulations carved in stone, but of a love and compassion that moves the very being of the Son of God. Jesus was altogether different from the teachers of the law. Jesus responds to needs and he responds to love. And as we think about what church is, how to be church, do church, and what the church is for, we are reminded that the church is there because we see the need in the lives of others. We see the need to tell them of God's love for them and we are moved to do everything we can to reach them with the good news of Jesus' love. Notice at the start of our reading we are told that when Jesus saw this need he called his disciples and disciples are those who follow, those who learn. But then we're told that he sent out the apostles. And the word apostle means emissary or ambassador. One who's sent out to proclaim a message. We are called not just to be the disciples, those who are learning about God, learning about Jesus, those who are following him. But he also calls us to go out and to proclaim the message of his love. How we will be church, how we will do church, we are looking at 
as new rules and regulations come out about social, social distancing and about keeping each other and other people safe. But as we consider what that means for us, we will remember that what matters most is our love for people and our desire to proclaim that good news that Jesus sends us out into our community to proclaim, to bring them freedom from fear, freedom from isolation, freedom from judgment, to give them the freedom of knowing that God loves them. That's what it is to be church. How we do it, we will explore together. Amen.